Okay, this podcast will cover the HTTP protocol, hypertext transfer protocol. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how it works, and then we will look at the traffic in Wireshark because that's what we love to do. We love to look at traffic in Wireshark. So, uh, HTTP is the protocol used to uh, transfer web pages. Sometimes you may see HTTPS. That uses the same protocol. It just transfers it across a uh, encrypted tunnel. So it's not nearly as interesting to look at at uh, HTTPS stuff in, in Wireshark, although we will do that at some point. Uh, so basically, I'm going to start restart Wireshark so that we can capture the traffic. And then I'll open my browser, and we're going to go to a web page. I think it was uh, a good one I saw was the LOL Cats. Cats page. They have funny cat pictures. So uh, we went to this web page and it downloaded the page and a bunch of cat pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and stop Wireshark. Capture, stop. And then we'll look at our cat pictures. So uh, when you go to a web page, you make a request for the default page. And that comes down, and then that default page, usually HTML code, will uh, reference other things you need to get. So a way we can go look at our HTML code that this page used was to go to the uh, look at stuff somewhere, developer tools usually, or view source. We we'll look at view source, and this shows us the HTML page that came down. So the first request we made to the server uh, brought down this page. And then within this page, there were some other things that we needed to get. So here's the JavaScript. So we had to jo download this JavaScript. And then there's some other stuff. There's got to be some pictures somewhere. Yeah, so this is a link. A link a picture. There's a picture. There's the image source. So for all these different things in here, we have to go make requests. To download them so uh, we'll look at that in uh, Wireshark so when you first get into Wireshark if you look at the capture I captured while we were connecting to that page and there's a lot of stuff in there so uh, you probably want to try to limit the amount of stuff you see so that you only see the stuff you want to see and you might be tempted to filter to HTTP uh, and that might be reasonable, but then that shows a bunch of other stuff that's not really uh, what we were looking for, but it's still using the HTTP protocol like this SSDP, whatever that stuff is. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Windows NT, PMP. Uh, anyway, so that might help you get what you want, and then you can find some other stuff. So this looks more interesting to me. Uh, so I would look at that probably. Uh, another thing you could do is if you just wanted to look for web HTTP related to web browsing, you could do TCP port equal 80 and apply that. If you apply that, then that shows us uh, all the packets associated with our, our uh, transfer. So you could do that. Another thing you could do is you could actually find the IP address of the web server you went to. So if you like NS look up www.lolcats.com. That was the site, right? Lolcats.com, yeah. And then you can filter by IP address. So here it says the IP is 192.81.131.161. So you could do TCP port 80. You could put an and on there, or you could just do IP.addr equals equals 191.192.81.192.81.131.161. So that will show us just the traffic between our, our machine and that, um, that server. So this is all the HTTP stuff we had for that. All the all the traffic, you know. Let's say we can do and and TCP dot port equal equal eighty.
So that makes sure we have just the port 80 stuff. So uh, HTTP protocol, the client sends a request uh, and the request, the server sends back a response. So the client request, most common request methods you'll see are get, we see right there, get, I got the uh, HTTP uh, request, I sent a get, and then the response is what the server sent back to me. So in this case, here's the response, you know, 200 OK. So uh, if I click on any particular packet within a Wireshark capture, and I do follow TCP stream, then that'll pop up a window that kind of shows me what happened within my session in, you know, real time, if you will. Not real time. Kind of a summary of what happens. So here I did a get uh, slash HTTP 1.1 told it the uh, protocol. Here's the header information I sent, you know, along with it. And here's the server response, 200 OK. And then this would be the, the data that came back down with the request. We change that to ASCII, we might actually be able to see the page now. Ooh, yeah, beautiful. Heck stump. Raw. So anyway, that didn't really help uh, to see the, the page. thought maybe it would decode it for us, but this is basically the HTML page that came down um, when we requested it. The next thing we do, if we were to look back at our, our our file, you know, I said we, we make a request for all the different things that, that come down. Well, the next thing we see is a, a request for, so it's a title. This is my first request for the main page. Here's the main page. If I scroll down, I do a request for CSS dot slash bootstrap dot CSS. So if we look, there should be up here near the top somewhere, there should be a CSS file. Yeah, there we go. CSS dot slash bootstrap dot CSS. All right, the next thing says CSS dot slash main dot CSS. Then we're looking for favorite icon. So um, we scroll down, we'll see what else we're asking for. Oh, it says images thumb up dot PNG. So even though my, my uh, main index.html file said get bootstrap and then get main.cs and then get fave icon and then you get a JavaScript, the next thing I'm asking for in this session is a thumbs up.png. And that happens because of one of the things your uh, browser does to try to help you get pages faster. It will open multiple TCP sessions to do all the, all the requests. So uh, this one session, you see I have my filter says tcp.stream equals one. After I did follow TCP stream and close that window, my Wireshark only has that TCP stream uh, visible. So if we look at this, here's my first get, here's my response, here's my next get, CSS bootstrap. Here, let's uh, make this a little easier to read. Here's my next get, CSS bootstrap.css, okay. Get thumbs up, okay. And then get uh, lolcats.com prom date.jpg, okay. So even though there were tons of pictures and images, and I guess those are the same thing, right? Pictures and images. Even though there was lots of things that we needed to get, we only got some of them in this session. And if we filter out, get rid of this TCP stream, and look at what really happened with regard to HTTP, we see that, go back up to the top. Uh, darn it, ball. I'm gonna put the IP address in there to get rid of that other junk. So we look at what happened, if we go back up to the top, we did our get, we got that back, we did our bootstrap, which was in the same session, but then this was the next file we should have got based on what was in the in the um, in the index.html file, the source file. So if we look at that, what happened was we opened new TCP sessions. So in this case, this source port was 49.760. If we look at the previous request, it was 49.759. So we opened a new TCP session and issued a, a request at the same time. And then this next one's probably gonna be 49761 as a source port. So that's yet another TCP session. Uh, 49760, that was one of the ones we already had. 49761, 49759, 49762, there's yet another 
TCP session. So we're up to four TCP sessions at this, this point. 60, 61, 65. Ooh, what happened to 63 and 64? Maybe some other app, some other process used those uh, TCP port numbers, something else going on. So we have four, five, six, 65, and 66. We're up to six TCP sessions. And we tell our different TCP sessions based on the port numbers. So yeah, so we opened six different TCP sessions to download this, uh, this data. Uh, so we used our initial connection to keep getting files and then we kind of did some multitasking, if you will, and opened some new sessions to get those, uh, those files uh, down uh, concurrently. So instead of doing them one at a time with one TCP session, we opened several TCP sessions and downloaded them all, uh, not all, many of them uh, sequentially. So uh, that was that. As you probably should recall from the uh, TCP studies uh, that you know we may be interested in looking at uh, looking at the packet sent when the session is established and the way we can do that is by finding the sin tcp.flags uh, dot sin equal equal so this will show me packets have the sin flag set so now if we look at that these are packets to the server on port 80 with the sin flag set so here I have some sins you know for the first session the second session my SYNAC coming back for the first second, my sec first connection, TCP session. I can tell by the port numbers, right? This is 47, 49, 759. Here's the response to 49, 759. Here's the packet from 49, 760. Here's the response from 49, 760. So that uh, shows that. So if we want to know how many TCP sessions uh, were involved in this transfer, we could count the sessions this way um, but this shows us the sins and the acts so we don't we don't want to count the sins and acts because that goes with the same session the sin came from so another thing we can do is tcp dot flags flags dot act equal equals zero and this will show us the tcp segments that only have the sin flag set so if we wanted to know how many sessions tcp sessions were a part of this uh, web page connection one, two, three, four, five, six. So we had six TCP sessions, which matches up what I counted uh, before. So uh, that's that's a little bit about the TCP, uh, the way the browser uses TCP to kind of get data uh, concurrently. We'll go back to our normal setting and look at our HTTP stuff again. So lots of times when you go to a web page, right? The image, the, the data hasn't changed on the page. Like a page is, consists of many different artifacts. A lot of them are like logos and other images and stuff that doesn't change every time. So it's not very efficient use of our uh, network resources to resend the same data repeatedly. So HTTP is taking that into account. When you uh, do a request, right, you get an image. The HTTP status code comes back says 200 OK. That means I'm sending you the image. If we if we didn't have this filter for HTTP, we would see the data uh, coming down for this image. Well, after you have the image, it gets stored locally on your computer in your browser cache, right? So if I go to this page again, I think I need to start my uh, capture. Yeah, restart my capture file. If I go to this page again, right, and I look at what happens this time. I might see something a little differently, right? For the most part, I made my requests, right? Get, I got 200 okay. But then down here when I got the images, 304 not modified. So uh, somehow the server detected that I already had a copy of this image on my um, machine and it said, hey, use the one you already have. And the way it did that was in the HTTP header, when I sent my request, I sent a, I was looking to see if it existed on this, uh, on this request, and it's not on the main page. 
on the picture request for the pictures in the CSS files, I sent this if modified since header. So basically, the last time this image was modified is saved on the server, or this image or file was modified was saved on the server. And now every time I request the page, if I will send back this if modified since header, and then the server will only send me the file if the file it has is newer than the one I have. So since the one I have is, is newer, is, this, is the same one the server has, it sends me back to 304 not modified, and then that uh, allows the browse, this browser and the server to minimize the amount of uh, data that's sent back and forth. Um, with regard to the pictures that haven't changed because it does really make sense to to take up network bandwidth sending a picture that's the same picture that you already have so uh, that's that's how caching can help us uh, be more efficient in the use of our uh, bandwidth um, so uh, if I wanted to force it to send me the the uh, data again or for some reason you know I use a different browser or if I went and cleared my browsing data. All right, if I go clear my cache, clear browsing data forever. All right, now if I request this page again, uh, now if I request this page again, if I look at, at what's happening, let me stop this. If I look at what's happening, I'm getting a bunch of 200 OKs again instead of 304 not modifieds. And the difference is, if you look at the HTTP headers, there is no if modified since header in here because I deleted the files that were on my disk. So I no longer have those files on my disk, so the um, server has to send them back to me for me to display. So that's a uh, quick overview of how the HTTP protocol works and how to find some stuff about it in uh, Wireshark.